super stoked about today because I get to share something with you guys that I've been kind of keeping secret for a while. I've actually decided to sell my Rivendell, my crust, and my Thai uh, bear claw because I've been on the search for a perfect bike and I think I finally found it. So as a bike YouTuber, I get to test out lots of bikes. I think I've ridden and tested over 80 bikes total. Everything from sporty gravel bikes, chunky bike packing bikes, even some custom one-offs. And I think all of them were great in their own way. But to be honest, none of them were truly the one. They were each lacking some small detail, some geometry thing that I think could have been improved. It's taken me months of patiently waiting, doing a ton of research, uh, reading all your insightful comments. But I finally committed, I am all in. Check out my dream bike, which was totally ahead of its time. That's right, a 90s mountain bike. I mean, just look at it. This 29 pounds of 90s glory. It's a Schwinn Paramount from their Series 20 PDG bikes. It's got MOS, which stands for Mountain Oversize. I think we all know and can agree that 90s mountain bikes were pretty much the pinnacle of bike design and human ingenuity. Honestly, if you think about it, we're just dumb for riding anything other than 90s mountain bikes, actually. Riding gravel, get a 90s mountain bike. Riding a crit race, get a 90s mountain bike. Road time trial, 90s mountain bike. Track racing, do I have to say it? They were truly the epitome of bike design. And I think it's testament to our decline as a species that we're not still riding them today. But I don't want to wax too poetic. I mean, let's let's dive into the details here. First off, check out this inch and an eighth non-tapered head tube matched with a one inch quill stem. This is the ultimate in front end suppleness and compliance. Forget about suspension stems or future shock or whatever Specialized is calling it. This is it. This is this is it. This this bike in the 90s is also sporting massive tire clearance. Check out the clearance for this fat meat at 26 inch by 2.3. Even though this tire didn't exist at the time, they were thinking ahead. That's just how forward thinking they were thinking. <laughs> also the cantilever rim brake. We've truly gone backwards going to hydraulic disc brakes if you think about it. I mean, look at that ginormous braking surface area, all that adjustable mechanical advantage. Why are we even bothering with tiny disc brakes when we had it all with the 26 inch rim brake? Rim brakes after all are just giant discs. Moving to the controls, check out these handlebars. They're rocking narrow technology. Who needs super wide handlebars when you've got this perfect blend of aerodynamics as well as off-road control? Speaking of control, check out these AccuShift thumb shifters, which can be both run in index as well as friction for infinite trim. Can your fancy schmancy disposable blip pods do that? Thought so. Moving to the drivetrain, you don't just have one one by, you have three one by all at the same time. Forget Eagle, you've got three goal, baby. Three goal. Three goal is the next big thing. The bike is beautifully external routed because even back then in the yonder years, they knew how asinine internal routing would be. Oh, how far the great have fallen. Moving to the rear, we've got a dainty seven speed cassette. All of the gears you need and none of the nonsense to distract you. No massive pizza plate on your rear wheel, coupled with a knuckle dragging Neanderthal rear derailleur. It's perfect in terms of a functional perspective as well as an aesthetic one. Leonardo da Vinci couldn't have done a better job himself. And lastly, can we just linger and contemplate on this vet saddle for a second? Take it in, all this rear end compliance and suppleness, no loss in efficiency. This is truly engineering in haiku form. What we've witnessed here today is the pinnacle of bike design. It's it's literally all downhill from here. Who needs a modern gravel bike when you've got this? Or, or any bike for that matter. Road bike, that's just a 90s mountain bike with drop bars and skinny tires. Full suspension, that's just a 90s mountain bike compensating for lack of skill. Cargo bike, that's just a 90s mountain bike with a backpack on it. So this, my friends, is why I am selling all my bikes and pretty much stopping bike reviews altogether. To continue to review bikes after having the pinnacle of bike design, it's it's like drinking the nectar from the gods and then washing it down with some coconut liqueur. Like who, who drinks that? So there you go, I got a 90s mountain bike. Be sure to subscribe so you can see how these mere mortal hands can feebly try to build onto the perfection that is the early 90s Schwinn Paramount. That's it for today, everybody. Keep the supple side down.